assignment 2.2, part 2, Millie Galloway. In this assignment, we predicted what heart rate, breathing rate, and energy systems did during steady state exercise. We conducted an experiment which required 20 minutes of exercise on an exercise bike. We then tested to see how the body reacted. This is testing to see how the body reacts to steady state exercise. Steady state exercise is the balance between the energy required by the working muscles and the rate of oxygen circulating the body to get to the muscles. Our hypotheses. Cardiovascular response to steady state exercise. Heart rate will plateau after three minutes of steady state exercise. Our respiratory response to steady state exercise hypothesis. Breathing rate will plateau after three minutes. Our energy systems response to steady state exercise hypothesis. The main system used will be the aerobic energy system. Our method before exercise. Apply the heart rate monitors to the performer. Take the initial measurements. Heart rate using the heart rate monitor. Breathing rate by observing the chest and counting breaths for 30 seconds and times in by two. But I'd like to take levels by using a Primprec and a lactate monitor. And finally, O2 saturation using the saturation monitor. Then a warm-up must be administered. Five minutes on the bike will do. Therefore, the muscles being used in the actual exercise are being warmed up. Finally, you need to apply the correct resistance in accordance to the performer's weight onto the exercise bike. Method during. Every two minutes on the even, we take the heart rate. Every two minutes on the odd, we take the breathing rate. Every four minutes, we take the O2 saturation. And every five minutes, we take the blood lack of perceived exertion. The method after exercise. Once exercise is finished, the performer must continue to exercise. Then after five minutes, you must retest for all of the tests. These are our heart rate graphs. This is the data we collected. In Rachel's data, we can see her heart rate starts quite high at the beginning of exercise, but then drops from around 160 to 100. Her heart rate increases from 100 in, in the fourth minute to around 180. Her heart rate increases to around 190 in the next four minute gap. There is an increase of only 10 beats within these four minutes. At the 12 minute mark, we see a decrease in heart rate, even though she is still exercising. The heart rate drops from 190 at the 12th minute to 170 at the 16th minute. However, once we hit the 16th minute, Rachel's heart rate will begin to increase again. Therefore, at the 18th minute, we can see her heart rate has risen to 180. It then plateaus at this point until the 20th minute. There is no data in Rachel's we can disregard. However, a decrease in heart rate during exercise would not be expected. Perhaps Rachel started working anaerobically and she had to slow down her work rate, therefore to start working aerobically again. In Billy's data, we can see that from the first minute to the fourth minute, there is an increase from 90 to 100. He then has a steeper increase from the fourth minute to the sixth minute from 100 to 150. At the sixth minute, Billy's heart rate drops from 160 to 55 in the seventh minute. This would not be expected. At the seventh minute, the heart rate then begins to increase. In the eighth minute, the heart rate stands at 160. But Billy's heart rate starts to fluctuate, and this continues from the eighth minute to the nineteenth minute, with the highest point being 180 in the eleventh minute, and the lowest point being 100 in the seventeenth minute. However, from the nineteenth minute to the twentieth minute, there is a decrease in heart rate, perhaps implying that Billy stopped working at the same intensity before exercise was actually finished. Billy's data is peculiar, with many results not seeming to follow the trends of normative data. Therefore, we will probably redo this test on Billy to check that the recordings came out similar. Luke's data shows a slight decrease from 120 at minute 1 to 115 at minute 3. Luke's heart rate can be seen to increase after minute 3. It continues to increase until minute 13 where the heart rate is just above 160. It fluctuates slightly until the 17th minute, then it plateaus at a value of 165 till the 20th minute. We expected Luke's heart rate to plateau. Instead, it con continued to increase and only started to plateau at the 17th minute. However, the decrease in heart rate at the start of exercise is not expected. This is the normative data for heart rate and breathing rate. So we would expect to see an increase when exercise starts in both. And then we would expect to see a plateau and then the recovery period, obviously, it will start to decrease. This is the cardiovascular analysis of our data. To measure the heart rate, we use the heart rate monitor mainly. However, Rachel's results were questionable throughout the experiment. As they were implying she was working well above her aerobic zone, yet her other data such as RPE and breathing rate suggested otherwise. Therefore, to check her results, we used the O2 saturation monitor and her Fitbit. We monitored and recorded her heart rates across the 20 minutes. According to normative data, the heart rate should increase at the start of exercise. It then should begin to plateau after a certain heart rate is achieved. Then the heart rate should gradually drop off post-exercise. At 1-3 to three minutes, there was an average decrease of 8 beats per minute due to Rachel's decrease of 58 beats per minute. 
from the second to the fourth minute. The readings may have been incorrect at this point, or Rachel could have been working in the wrong target zone, therefore affecting the overall average and turning it into a decrease, which, go, which goes against our hypothesis that heart rate should increase at the start of exercise. During the middle stage, the second to the 20th minute, there was an average increase of 48, 45 beats per minute. This shows that there wasn't a plateau, which according to normative data should have occurred, therefore implying that we hadn't reached the target zone. We were over it as Rachel's heart rate was 190 at 3 minutes and 20 minutes. This doesn't make sense as Rachel's results were implying she was working aerobically other than this data. Um, her RPE scale and breathing rate showed that she was working aerobically, but her heart rate suggested otherwise. It is possible that we may have had 40 equipment. However, we checked Rachel's heart rate on multiple devices, therefore making her results an anomaly, as they do not follow the normative data. We have no explanation for this. Billy's results also changed the average, as his heart rate did not put her at all, meaning that he would have changed the average. Another factor to note about Billy's is that at 7 minutes, our data shows he had a heart rate of 60. This is ina inaccurate, as this would not be appropriate heart rate for someone who was working aerobically. This is simply not a high enough heart rate, as the body would not be able to get the oxygen needed for exercise at this heart rate. When the body starts to exercise, the receptors in the body detect changes. The three receptors that come into play are the proprioceptors, chemoreceptors, and baroreceptors. Right as exercise starts, the proprioceptors send an impulse to the CCC in the medulla oblongata. Chemoreceptors detect changes in the chemicals, e.g. the lack of oxygen, the build-up of CO2, and lactic acid. This also sends a message to the CCC in the medulla oblongata. This is how we can assume there was not enough oxygen being delivered to any of the athletes in the first section of exercise as the heart rate increases. Meaning, once the chemoreceptors detect the lack of oxygen, a message is sent to the CCC and then down the parasympathetic nervous system to increase heart rate. Here are the graphs for our breathing rate. At the start of exercise, Rachel's data shows her breathing rate increases from 14 in the first minute to 16 in the third minute. Then her breathing rate decreases in the third minute from 16 down to 15 in the fifth minute. From the next six minutes on, her breathing rate increases but not at a steady rate. At 11 minutes, her breathing rate is at 18. Then there is a dip in Rachel's breathing rate from 18 to 17 in the 13th minute. Finally, her breathing rate increases to, to 17 in the 19th minute. We can't disregard any of da Rachel's data. However, you would expect to see an increase in breathing rate at the start of exercise and then her breathing rate should have plateaued. However, her seems to have fluctuated. Luke's breathing rate wasn't recorded right at the start of exercise, therefore his first value we have for him is 5 minutes, where his breathing rate is 23. His breathing rate increases to 25 in the 10th minute, in the 15th minute his breathing rate was 27, so we can see his breathing rate will continue to increase. Then from the 15th to the 18th minute, Luke's breathing rate plateaued. We don't have to disregard his data, however it would have been an idea to redo the test and take values at the start, because we don't know whether Luke's had an increase in the first 5 minutes like we predicted. At the start of exercise, Billy's breathing rate increases only slightly from the second minute to the fourth minute, going from 43 to about 46. These results simply do not make very much sense, as his breathing rate at resting should have been around 12. However, I digress. His breathing rate increases till the 12th minute, reaching to approximately 63 breaths a minute. That is over a breath a second. In the 12th minute to the 14th minute, his breathing rate plateaus at this level, and from the 14th minute to the 20th minute, his breathing rate decreases from 63 to 48. I think we can disregard some of Billy's data as it simply does not make sense that he would be doing more than one breath a second. We would have to redo this test to get some more accurate reading. Here is the respiratory analysis from our experiment. We predicted that the breathing rate would increase, then plateau up after. There is simply not enough oxygen going to the working muscles. We monitored the breathing rate throughout the 20 minutes by observing the chest moving for 30 seconds and then times it by 2. Normal breathing rate at resting is 12 to 14, however, 5 minutes in our data, the breathing rate increased to 28 breaths. This indicated that the initial stage of our hypothesis of breathing rate was correct, and that all three clients experienced an increase in breathing rate. This would have happened because of the high demand for oxygen. They would have been detected by the chemoreceptors that detect the decreased level of oxygen in the blood, therefore sending a message to the RCC. Then a message would go down the intercostal nerve, which would then cause the respiratory muscles to start contracting, causing the more oxygen to be taken into the lungs. From 5 to 10 minutes there is a further increase of 6 breaths, however we would have theoretically expected to see the plateau start to occur. This didn't happen for any of the clients, therefore implies that something was wrong in the recording, the data, or that the aerobic zone had not been reached. This would have meant that the body was not receiving enough oxygen for the breathing rate to plateau. From the 10th to 18th minute there is an average decrease in breaths of 3, from 34 breaths down to 31. 
This decrease is very slight, therefore implying that this stage was when our plateau should have occurred. This would correlate with our hypothesis. However, the decrease, which is caused by Billy's result, could have implied that Billy stopped working as hard, causing his breathing rate to decrease. This would happen because not as much oxygen would be needed if the body is not working as hard. I believe that Billy's result influenced the average as his results were not what we predicted in our hypothesis. And his recordings were not anything like what we would anticipate according to normative data. At one section, Billy's breathing rate is recorded at 63, which is over a breath a second. This does not seem right, so if we were to do the experiment again, we would record Billy's breathing rate. A reason Billy's breathing rate could be wrong is human error, as the recording method is just for person counting the movement of the chest. Here is the RPE for all three clients. We can see that Luke's RPE starts at 11 showing that he felt like he was working quite hard at the start. This could be because of his warm-up. It may not have been efficient, therefore when exercise started, Luke's body was not prepared, or maybe his warm-up was too intense and tired him out before exercise began. Therefore, he felt like he was working extremely hard. All of the athletes raised their level of RPE, with Rachel's increasing to the 6th minute, Billy's increasing to the 10th minute, as well as Luke's increasing to this point also. The two boys then had a plateau with their RPE, where they found that the exercise they're doing was not increasing in intensity, therefore implying maybe their bodies were beginning to adjust to the demands of exercise, which would back up our hypothesis of breathing rate and heart rate, as maybe the reason they were not finding it more difficult is because their bodies had adjusted to the demand. Rachel, on the other hand, continues to increase to level 13. However, Rachel's level started off much lower than the boys, so potentially she was not working the right training then at the start, and that is why she didn't experience the same plateau as the boys. The OT saturation. Luke's O2 saturation increases from the 4th minute to the 8th minute. There's an increase of 8%. The increase then slows as there is an increase from the 8th to 12th minute of 1%, followed by a decrease from the 12th to 16th minute of 1%. The fact there was so little change in this section shows this is where Luke's O2 saturation is attempting to, to plateau. Then there is a plateau till the end of exercise once the body has adjusted to the demands of exercise that the O2 saturation should plateau. Billy's O2 saturation increases between the second to third minute from 64% to 97%. It then fluctuates, staying within the range of 90 to 99% for the next seven minutes, until the minute 10. At minute 10, Billy's O2 saturation levels off and plateaus at the same value of 98. This could be because when the body is receiving the amount of oxygen it needs, the O2 saturation will plateau. Rachel's O2 saturation increases from the fourth minute to the eighth minute, from 63 to 90. This is because the working muscles have a higher demand for oxygen. Therefore, a message would have been sent from the chemoreceptors as they detect the level of oxygen in the blood. A message would have been sent to the RCC, then a message would go down the intercostal nerves, which would cause the respiratory muscles to start contracting, causing more oxygen to be taken into the lungs. Luke's lactate levels start at 10 in the first minute, then drop to 5 in the fifth minute. However, we can see Luke has a large build-up of lactate, reaching levels of 21 in the 15th minute. This would imply that Luke had not started using his aerobic glycolysis system. However, the opposite happens for Rachel and Billy as their lactate levels decrease. This could be because they had reached the aerobic glycolysis system that we predicted in our hypothesis. However, Rachel's increase in lactate near the end of exercise is a bit of an anomaly. And there should not have been an increase here. As this should have, as she should have been using her aerobic glycolysis system at this time because all of her en other energy systems will not have enough energy to provide for this amount of time. Here's our energy systems analysis. We predicted in our hypothesis that the main energy system that would be used is the aerobic glycolysis, as the exercise is submaximal and lasts for a period of 20 minutes. Therefore, the other systems cannot supply the amount of energy that is needed to last for 20 minutes. We can test to see that the system is being used by checking the O2 saturation levels, as the higher they are, the more likely to imply that the athlete is using the aerobic glycolysis system, and the blood lactate levels, as the higher these levels are, the less likely it is that we are using the aerobic glycolysis system. This is because lactic acid is a byproduct of the anaerobic glycolysis system. Fourth minute to the eighth minute, there was an O2 saturation, meaning more oxygen is getting to more parts of the body, showing that blood is being pumped around the body faster. A message will be sent to the CCC and the RCC, leading to more oxygen being delivered. From the eighth minute to the twentieth minute, there was an average increase in five percent. That although there was an increase, it was only slight. Therefore, implying that the athletes in the experiment were using the aerobic glycolysis system as we predicted. The lactate levels in our experiment data showed that from the start of exercise to the tenth minute, there was an average increase of fourteen for blood lactate levels. At the rest, normally, normal levels are recorded 0.5 to 1.5. This clearly shows that lactic acid was being produced during exercise. However, we can state that Billy's result influenced the overall average as his 10th minute result was considerably higher than the other two athletes. His was 22 and Rachel's and Luke's were 8 and 12. This definitely could suggest Billy was working in his anaerobic, anaerobic zone and using his anaerobic glycolysis system. 
In the final period of exercise, from the 10th minute to the 20th minute, there was an average increase.